Good morning, my friends. Welcome. I don't even know why I have these in because we're not in like Zoom. That's just habit. But again, welcome to today's training. Today we're going to be talking about your voice. You've got one, and here's how you're going to find it. This is a core principle of the Know Yourself strategy, and it's essential to really coming to know yourself so that you can both love and live who you are. Now, if you're new to me, I am Marshall Bircher. Welcome. I'm excited to have you here. And what I do is I help codependents rediscover their well-being, their happiness and satisfaction in life by helping them heal the trauma bond, helping them come to know, love, and live who they are and create happy, sustainable relationships in their life. So before we get started today, it's all about getting this shared out to the community, actually. So I'm going to click on some buttons. The community is your safe haven here on the internet where you can find tools, guidance, and support in your journey out of codependency and into self-love, self-respect, and living a life rooted in your own beingness. So the link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button there, guys. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below. I'm going to click a button, and I'm going to click another button, and voila, we are good to go. So I'm excited to have you here, and today we are doing uh, episode five of Discovering the Real You. You've got a voice, and here's how you find it. So in codependency, we do this thing called external orientation. So to review that concept, it's where we seek ourselves through the voice, through the point of view, through the opinions of other people. So their perspective defines us. We're absorbing their voice, their view as our own, and then shaping our sense of self to that. We do that as part of a fond response to a person and because we're coming from the premise that who I am is not lovable, is not wantable, and I need to become what they want me to be in order to be accepted, to be seen, to be valued, to be loved. So we exit codependency, we break this, this habit of external orientation and mimicking or, or shape-shifting, we break that and turn to a new practice called internal orientation. Internal orientation is having access to ourself. What do I think? What do I feel? What do I sense here? What do I perceive? What do I want? What do I not want here? What do I need? What do I not need? Things of that nature. It's becoming attuned to our own wisdom, our own brilliance, our own awareness of things, of ourself, of other people, of situations, of what's coming, of what we would like, and what we don't, and what we would not like. It's also in essential to fundamentally having boundaries, having what's called personal sovereignty or your own autonomy. It's essential to being able to live a life that produces happiness in your world and being able to maintain well-being and have relationships, friendships, and experiences in your world that matter to you. So it's critical that we get internally oriented. And this is really what it's about because internal orientation is attuning to our own voice. So a lot of times we have absorbed other people's voices. We have absorbed programming from media and entertainment from expectations of authorities around us. You've, if you've been with me a while, you've probably absorbed my voice. This shows up as, oh, Marshall's in my head, or mom's in my head, or dad's in my head. We've absorbed other people. Uh, we have programming from our social experiences, our culture, what's, what we have encountered in our lives, and that shows up as things you should do, you must do, you have to do, or you're not worthy, lovable, or valuable. That also includes things you that won't, you won't do, or that you can't do, um, as limits to your own power, your own capability, your own creative uh, expansion, your own living of your life. Those I call uh, programming voices and the voice of other people. These are not who we are. They have nothing to do with us. They have everything to do with something outside of ourselves. And we have inadvertently 
absorb those as our own voice and we've confused ourselves a lot by following those things and then we get results that don't work and we get into situations that don't function well for us and we get stuck in dynamics that leave us feeling empty and confused and frustrated and in pain and i might just sneeze here because we'll see what it does <sighs> but when we're coming back to ourselves we're learning this thing called internal orientation we start to discern our true voice from the voice of programming and the voice of other people and this often doesn't show up the way we think it will um, often mo most of the time we are not aware of our true voice yet our true voice has been screaming at us for a while this is often the things we have tuned out of our awareness like our feelings about something, our gut instinct, our intuitive response to something, the hunches that show up, our anger, our sadness, our confusion, our need, our want. These are aspects of our voice. They are um, expressions of it. And we've tuned those out. Or we've never really come into real contact with them to understand their legitimacy and their value. Because we were not raised to attune to ourselves. We were raised to absorb and please the other. So we haven't had what's called positive reflection about our own needs, our own wants. We were not asked what we thought, what we felt, what we wanted, what we needed. Instead, we were like, you need to do this and you have to do that and you have to be this way. So we were conditioned to conform to an external or um, expectation or authority. We were not taught to reference ourselves. This is why we get lost in life. This is why we don't know what makes us happy. This is why we don't know what we want. This is why we get anxious, confused, flustered, or frustrated when we're trying to figure out what we want to do in our world. This is why we wander through a lot of different things because we're not attuned to ourselves. We're attuned to the expectations of others and to the habit of pleasing others through, at the expense of ourself. So now we're gonna come home to ourselves. We've gotta come back into contact. And where do we start with that? On my process in the Know Yourself strategy, we start with the body. We start with attuning to the body's sensations, what it's aware of, what it's signaling to us, in a variety of different situations, like shopping, like sitting in your own house, like sitting with an object and going, hmm, what do I feel and think about this object? Being in the presence of your own self and sensing into what shows up for you there. Being in the presence of another individual, seeing what you sense. It's a very somatic, in-body experience because we're not going to figure this out analytically it's not up here in the body or in the mind rather it's here in the body somatic listening is really this attunement to wow this is what i'm aware of right now and this requires us to have been grounded in our body and to be accustomed to holding space for whatever shows up and we i teach you that in the heal yourself strategy so this builds on that. And the Know Yourself strategy, I teach you how to attune to this and then start discerning these three voices, the voice of other people, programming, and then your true voice. And that's where magic starts to happen because you're like, I don't like this thing, so I'm going to say no. Ooh, this is not who I want to be in this. I want to be this instead. Now you got a choice. You start being able to understand yourself. You start being able to trust yourself. And from there, you start being able to follow yourself. And this allows you to know, love, and live who you are. Because you start realizing that, hey, it's your life. You're the one that lives with the consequence of your choices and actions. So why not make choices and actions that give you consequences you want to live with? You start to live independent of approval and rejection. And you start to build relationships based on respect, based on acceptance, based on connection and interest. This is where we start finding ourselves loving who we are and being loved for who we are. 
because we're no longer shape-shifting ourselves or, or mimicking or becoming a chameleon in order to get love. We're beginning to stand rooted in our body, rooted in our, our emerging identity and sense of self, and allowing ourselves to be seen and to be accepted or rejected in that. So now we start getting higher quality connection and higher quality uh, fulfillment reciprocation in our world because we're coming from who we are. You're coming from who you are. And they're coming from who they are. Boom. You get an honest experience. This is where you start finding out what your purpose is in life because you're the one that's going to be actively attuning to it and choosing it. You're going to find out the things that bring you joy. You're going to find out the things that don't. It's all reliant on our ability to tune into and allow our voice to take up space and then lean into trusting and allowing that voice to guide us and lead us. And that's what I help you do in the Know Yourself strategy. And, I mean, your voice isn't going to be all flowers. There's going to be anger. There's going to be sadness. There's going to be disappointment. There's going to be, like, big no's, like, "Mm mm-mm, not doing that. That ain't happening today. There's going to be deep clarity about what shows up for you and about what you really want and don't. It can be confronting because it reveals what we've been doing and not doing for our well-being and our happiness. But this is how you start to tune into it. It's by tuning into your body and acknowledging what's showing up for you and allowing that to become legitimate and allowing that to integrate so that you're attuned to you and then you can lean into trusting and following that. So my friends, that's how we start to know our voice because it's within us. It's in our body. It's not our analytical mind. It's not our thoughts. It's our sense. It's our perception. It's an awareness. It's our emotions. It's like, hmm, this is showing up. What is this trying to tell me? That's where we need to go in order to know ourselves deeply and be able, be able to, to live who we are in a way that really works for us. So, okay. So if you're looking for assistance in this, if you want to go deep in this, the Know Yourself Strategy Early Bird Registration is open. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. In this registration, you also get access to my my uh, pilot course called the Relationship Essentials course. You get them both for one low price. Both of them individually are going to are twelve hundred and fifty dollars to enroll in. But with this promotion, you can get them both for seven fifty. So <laughs> jump into that. It also inclo- includes enrollment in the Heal Yourself Strategy, as that is a support course to the Know Yourself Strategy. So you get a lot of value for for um, for your investment in the course. So I only have a limited number of spots available in that. Currently, there's 29 spots available out of 40, so they're moving quick. Enrollment closes on the 24th, so make sure you jump on that fast. Now I'll teach you how to know, love, and live who you are in the Know Yourself strategy. And in Relationships Essentials, I'll teach you how to create connection, comprehension, and satisfaction in your relationships by helping you regulate attachment, uh, create comprehension through your communication, and develop safe conflict that produces intimacy. So, boom. They're both live courses. Uh, the Know Yourself Strategy starts August 17th and runs through December 7th. And the Relationship Essentials course starts September 12th and ends November 28th. So, there you go, guys. Again, if you're, if you're looking for help, that's the place to go. Now, if you're now, now your job is to jump out there in the world and start attuning to your voice. Go out there and listen to what your body signals to you in your world. It's like, hmm, I don't like this fruit. I like that fruit. Hmm, follow that. You're going th- through clothing. You're like, I really like this. I don't like this much anymore. What do I want to do with it? Hmm, my body says give it to so-and-so. Give it to so-and-so. Start tuning into you and see what starts to emerge in you. You will find that your emptiness and your loneliness that you may harbor within you starts to melt away because we're f- that emptiness and loneliness is a response of being disconnected from ourselves. So when we come back to ourselves, we're like, hmm, I'm actually pretty full. I've got a lot of awareness and connection here. And then this helps us build relationships and friendships that add to our well-being and happiness rather than uh, fill holes in our sense of self. So there you go. Thank you guys for showing up for today's training. Remember that you're worth knowing, loving, and keeping. 
go gently with yourself in this process because healing from codependency and learning who we are beyond it and creating a life that is built on self-respect is a journey. It's not an event. So we've got you back there. And again, if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're looking for assistance, guidance, and support, join the community. The link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in our next training.